Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV's Midweek Musings now. I know it's Sunday, I know it's not midweek, but um, I thought I'd give it a little time because I was waiting for something to come through the post, to be quite honest with you, uh, before I started asking these questions. And I know that I put up a six-part question at the end of the season, but straight after I put up that, I got extremely, extremely ill and I was out of commission for about three or four weeks. And by the time I recovered and I could, I was well enough to film... It was uh, the, the, the subjects of long past. So I thought we'd start the season and the pre-season with a brand new uh, set of questions to get this going. And this is going to be a weekly series from now. Um, it's going to be uploaded uh, every Wednesday. Uh, so tune in for more. But let's see what the questions were and let's see how you answered them. That's the most important thing. So, OK, so question number one. Um, with all the new signings and possibly more to follow, where can we realistically aim for the season? Now, um, I don't think any West Ham fan in the world can uh, deny that we've had an absolutely fabulous uh, transfer window this, this season. Um, the additions of Zabaleta, Hart, Hernandez and Anatovic have been absolutely magnificent. Um, there's also talk of other players coming along as well. You've got Keita Balde that is still, you know, that that's thing still rumbling on. Um, you know, we've been linked with Giroud. We've been linked with loads of players. And you know what? I've got a feeling that there will be an extra one or two coming in. Um, so where can we realistically aim for this season? You know what? After the shambles of last season, we got we had done ourselves really because we got a commendable finish. But is it commendable? 11th after finish 7th for nearly getting Champions League. Um... Bear in mind our season was very poor to start. Um, I think it was the boys done well to get in the position they did. But where can we realistically aim for this season? Now, um, you see the likes of Everton strengthening, uh, but they've just lost their best player. That's the good thing about us. We've strengthened and we haven't lost anybody as of yet, uh, of note anyway. Um, Valencia's gone. Uh, Randolph's gone, which I think with Hart coming in, I think that's a great bit of business. Uh, Ashley Fletcher for £7 million has gone as well. That frees up wages, that puts more money in the coffers. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this season, uh, and we'll get onto this later, that the West Ham board is serious about making a serious indentation on the Premier League. Where can we realistically aim? Um, everybody's strengthening. That's the thing. That's the thing that was letting us down before, that we wasn't strengthening when other teams were, and we was, that's why we were slipping down the league. But I think a return to form, and you know, with some of the players that we've brought in, we can not compete with the big boys. I mean, you look at Man United, they just look like they've signed Matic as well as um, Lukaku and, and on top of Pogba and things like that. You know, they're going really strong. But we can give them a game now. You know, I don't think you'll see trounces like there was last year against Arsenal. I think we can push for top seven. I really do. Um, it's a big ask and it does... Um, probably mean one of the teams from the top four need to slip down the leagues a little bit. Um, but I think we can push for top seven, um, possibly top six. Um, but let's see. Let's see what you guys had to say anyway. Um, at Slav, uh, our old mate Slav, hello mate, uh, seven for eight. Um, at Jack in a, in Dia, 1271, I'll take eight or ninth if we win the League Cup, League, uh, what's that say? League end and go for FA Cup, otherwise sixth or seventh. Uh, Rob Herdoch th thinks Europa is a must. I think we can build even more next summer if we get the European football. Uh, PBM 1968. Target should be top 10 with aspirations of top 8, especially with other teams' investment. Do not want to drop anywhere near that relegation zone. Um, at Jamie Gray says, if we can get 7th, I feel we have a successful season. Top 6 are too stronger. However, a cup run is realistic as well. Uh, Andy in exile says, top 8 if we keep players fit. And have a striker weighing in with 15 plus goal. Um, Hayden Shepherd, uh, Hay DS says six to ninth with a good cup run. I'd, I'd love a good cup run. Um, at Jake Loman says the minimum target has to be top ten, but realistic target should be top eight. The squad is looking far more balanced now. At Dill 770M says anything between seventh and ninth and a good cup run in one of the cups. Everyone's wants a good cup run. A couple more on this. Uh, at Oli J17, I honestly think if we can stay injury free, we can finish in the top six. Um, I like, <laughs> I like his optimism. Then Andrew Cooper is even more optimist. Top five, easy. No, I'm not sure how easy that will be, Andrew. But thank you so much um, for your answers on that one. 
So number two, uh, and this one has rumbled on a little bit. Number two, Andy Carroll has been on social media allegedly, allegedly out until 9am in Magaluf when pre-season has started. Is he finished at West Ham? Um, since this has come out and I asked this question, um, it has been uh, quite well documented in the papers today that he'll be missing for the first three weeks of the season um, and will return for the first home game versus Huddersfield. Now, this confuses me with Andy because we all know he's injury trouble. We all know what he's like um, when he's playing. He's absolutely unstoppable, but his injury trouble is, you know, I can't remember another player like this, to be honest with you. It would be like the likes of Kieran Byron and, and Darren Anderton that you have to compare his injury record to. It's absolutely awful. Um, the club lied to us a little bit as well, which I, I, I find a little bit bemusing because they turn around and say to us it's too... I mean, this injury, I don't even know whether this is a fresh injury, but I don't think it is. I think it's the same one. Um, kept him out for five weeks before the end of the season and the three weeks of the new one. You're talking about a four-month injury there. And he has these very, very uh, often. Being pictured out in Magaluf now... A lot of people came back to me. I posted a picture of him in Magaluf. Um, a lot of people said they didn't think it was him. A lot of people said, um, well, he's out on his on his holidays, uh, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, the club give him the weekend off, but they've got to go back to, um, to training, whatever, like on Monday morning. Now, bear in mind that the summer's finished. Um, he would have been on maybe one or two really nice holidays then um, with his family and his kids and whatever. Um, he had five weeks of layoff at the end of last season. To be caught with your pants down in Magaluf when everybody else is out in Germany or Austria or wherever they was at the time, um, whether he was allowed to or not, he's not smart. And if you're an injury-prone player, staying up till nine o'clock in the morning, drinking and having parties when you're supposed to be in recovering I mean I said this to someone on the internet a doctor never um, a doctor never prescribes a mad weekend in Magaluf as part of an injury recuperation process they prescribe rest going out till nine o'clock in the morning now I don't know how many of you go out till nine o'clock in the morning but I've certainly been out on the Raz all night and you don't feel fresh the next day and you don't feel rested in fact you feel absolutely awful so getting caught like that for me is stupidity and do you know what? It's it's got to about here, and he's got a little bit more for me. I think he is finished at West Ham. Uh, in fact, I think he will be sold at the earliest opportunity. I think he's got a year left on his contract. Uh, Javier Hernandez coming in. They're looking at other strikers as well. Seco apparently is knuckled down, uh, and he's 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 you know getting ready for the start of the season. Um, I don't want to let him go, but I can't see how you can keep on doing this realistically and not shoot yourself in the foot. It's absolutely ridiculous uh, thing to do. I think it's a slap in the face to all West Ham fans. And, you know, he's in the Lance Chance Saloon for me. Like, right, let's see what you guys have to say. Okay, at Beacon Tree Hammer says he has one year left on his contract after then letting go. Besides, doing the right mind will buy him with this injury record. I don't even think the Chinese would be foolish enough to buy him. Uh, at Slab says, hope so. Although he is good and scores goals uh, when he is not injured, but enough is enough. Uh, at the Pride of East London, genuinely hope so. It's about time we let him go. Uh, at Jack India, 1271, I doubt it. I would actually rather let, let him heal up and take his time coming back to the squad and actually be 110% fit. We have two strikers now. Now, that might be a... Um, a good point there by uh, Jack is that we always seem to rely on him. We're always short of strikers. With Hernandez in and possibly another, maybe it, it, it can give him time to heal up. At Rob Hurd, Herditch says, with Sacco fit and a new signing, Andy who? Uh, it's not going well for Andy here. Um, at PBM 968, I'm not sure his heart is in it. Too injury prone and I think his body can't take any more than 10, 15 games in the season. Needs to recruit another striker. At the American Hammer says, uh, he is too valuable to get rid. On his day, he's unplayable. I would happy with a pay and um, for play deal to keep him uh, good for all involved. Uh, at Jake Loma said, "Man, I've given up on Carroll now, so could care less 
whether he goes or stays. Complete liability, annoyingly. Um, at Ron Gibbon says he is at Rush Green doing his fitness rehab. The pick was taken at the weekend. Players had the weekend off. Total non-story. As I said, it's not a good. It's not a good uh, look getting caught with your pants down when everyone else is off working hard. Uh, Carrie is on holiday. Uh, this is Andy in exile. Uh, it's not detrimental to his recovery. I have no. If it's not detrimental to his recovery, I have no problem with it. As I said, going out in a piss all night, mate. He, he's probably not. The recommended um, recovery route. Uh, at Cockney Bourne says he has taken the piss out of that club for long enough. Get rid of of him. Free up some wages for a player who wants to play and do well for us. Uh, at CCO3 WHU06, he's an idiot. Playing unplayable when fit should be resting and getting fit instead of partying. He's taken a piss out of Billich and the club now. I'll take a few more on this because there's a lot. At Vaz18 Flick77. There were reports saying he wouldn't be fit for the start of the season, but to uh, see him having a jolly ain't good, at least we've got options. Two more on this. At Lester White says, I thought that was a picture from a few years ago, to be honest. Well, I can confirm it wasn't a picture from a few years ago. Um, at Lucas Stevenson says, I think now we have got Hernandez. We ain't relying on him no more, but he's still unplayable when he's on form. So a great backup option for us. I'm going to take one more. <laughs> to finish this up, James Gamer says swap him for Crouch. Um, so quite damning for Andy, to be quite honest, and rightly so in my opinion. Right, number three. Uh, this is one that I've been looking forward to. Now, with all the signings, um, does Nicky Hawkins owe the West Ham board a grovelling apology? Now, do you know what? I'm going to put this down for a minute before I take your things, and I'm going to talk to you into the camera. Do I owe them a grovelling apology? No, I don't owe anybody a grovelling apology. Um, as you can tell by the way we do this channel, it is done uh, as a current affairs sort of program. So things that go out uh, currently are, you know, the way we're feeling at the time. So do I feel like I owe them an apology? Do you know what my 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 problem with the board isn't always player issues, you know. Um, there was player issues last year because we was having a, a, a bad season last year, um, and I couldn't I couldn't knock their business the year before with Dimmy Pyatt and whatever. My um, problem with the board comes with the lack of compassion to the to the working class fan and a lack of. Let's be honest, they've told us a lot of untruths, especially with the um, the move to the stadium and things like that. You know what? I won't apologise to them, um, although I've said some things that I should apologise for, but the tone of the, the things I won't apologise for. But I'll tell you what I'll do, and I've always said I'll do this, and I'm, I'm a fair man. I'll give them praise where praise is due, because player-wise, they couldn't have had a better window this year. And they've shut me up, and I will apologise for saying that they ain't willing to invest because they obviously are willing to invest their money. Um, but Lions was about the stadium and, and everything else. I'll never apologise for that because I still feel, I still feel uh, to this day that the truth wasn't told uh, about everything regarding the move to the stadium. You can pull up clips of David Gold telling everyone that the pitch was going to be in a comparable distance, otherwise, we wouldn't move there. That's a blatant lie. I can pull up a clip of Karen Brady telling us that our fixtures will take precedent over everything else at the stadium. Well, we're playing our first three games away from home, so that's a blatant lie. Um, I'm never going to apologise for those things, but I'm going to give credit where credit is due. They've had a fantastic window, and I'll tell you something now, I can't wait for the season to start. So let's see what you guys think. Do I owe them an apology? Um, at Mace WHU... Uh, 69 says they owe us an apology for their catalogue of lies since they bought the club one week of doing their job properly does not eliminate uh, all of that uh, Slav says uh, I should bring flowers to Karen Brady um, that can be arranged um, at Rob Herdot said, heard it says no they owe us all one for taking their this time to spend some real money at PBM 1968 says absolutely not 
Nicky speaks how it is and the voice of many fans and who follow West Ham Fan TV. Opinions should be voiced. Nicky is a top bloke. Thanks very much for that. Um, at Jack in DA says, an apology, no. Show gratitude and praise for the transfer window. Yes, and I, and I do, sincerely. Um, at Beacon Tree Hammer says, no, Nicky had every right to complain last season. The signings were shambolic. At least he have responded and made an amends, though. Uh, at Jack Hobson, 12, said he isn't the only one. That's true. Um, and I did say at the end of last season, if you check back on post-match points, that will give them to the end of the transfer window to really... Um, you know, judge them on their signings. Uh, at Jamie B, 1985 says, "No, they owed us in. They owed us this biased on last season shambles. Congratulate, yes, apology, no. At Hanson 19, no, they have had some. They have did some big fuck ups last year and deserve critic. But now everything is up to Billich and the players. At Heaney Liam says, no, regardless of the signings." They have still not followed through with the majority of the promises they made. Um, at Jake Lodman says, absolutely not. Well, within your right to say what you did during the, uh, the, the shit season last year. Just admitting they did, did a good job is fine. Um, let's see if anyone says yes. Okay. Andrew, Andy in exile says, big time. I think this is in tongue in cheek though. I want to see someone that really thinks I should. Um, big time. Get on your knees. Too many have judged the ball and they have come good in the end. More patience is needed. Um, that's that's yeah that's fine. That, I, I totally accept that. A Happy days game says no. They never gave us fans one last season. Um, at Jay Brown says oh all is forgiven. No way. Still sh sat in a shit stadium. Uh, at Jones, Joan, John and Athand. Nope. Just give an opinion of the window. Couple more on this. There's only one that says yes. Um, at James Gamer says no way after last season they needed to act. And the last one uh, at that Neo Nova ninety three no because we are all criticising the board, not just Nicky, and they finally stepped up to the plate and delivered after we begged them to. Um, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts this week on this week's edition of Monday Musings. Don't forget the season is fast approaching. It's two weeks away. Um, Loads of content coming up. Great new strands, great new sets for some stuff as well. Um, don't forget to go over to the, while we're at it, the Thames Eyeworks uh, Community FC project is up and underway. Uh, we've had a couple of rattlings early on, but it's getting all together nicely. We played again today, and I can confirm we did win 7-1. Uh, that's our first win of the season, of the pre-season, but we'll all be ready and going um, for the beginning of the next season. An update on your shirts. If you have ordered a Thames Ironworks Community FC shirt, um, the launch date was the 1st of September. I can confirm all the shirts are on their way and they will be out by that date. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I wanted to get them out a bit earlier, but we had a little bit of a problem with the supplier. Um, but everything is going swimmingly now. It's all been ordered. It's all on its way to us. As soon as we get them, we can send them out to you. We haven't forgot about you. We haven't run away with your money. I promise, I promise, I promise they will be with you by the 1st of September when we promised that they would be. Um, and thank you very much if you have supported us in that cause. It hasn't gone unnoticed. It's helped us a hell of a lot. Everyone that donated has just given me page. Everyone that's bought a kit, it's all been reinvested in the club. Um, you know, we've got a home ground now. We've got kits. We've got track suits. We've got training equipment, footballs that the boys keep on kicking over. But go over and subscribe to the Thames Ironworks Community FC cha channel. Um, we'll put a link in the description down below. Um, and thank you guys for being so patient with us. Um, sorry it's been a long summer I've had a good rest this year so I am ready to get up and go next year can't wait for Man United and I hope to see uh, a lot of you there for fan cams and things like that so one thing left to say at the end of all of that come on you irons <laughs>